What's up, y'all? This is Andy Story with Wild Lumens, and today I'm gonna show you how to make carnivore diet style waffles, both the beef version and the lamb version. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna taste test both of them to try and figure out which one's gonna taste even better. The cool thing about this recipe is that it's completely carnivore diet based. What I mean by that is all the ingredients are hailing from the animal kingdom. There's no plant-based matter whatsoever in this recipe, which is great news. And you can either add some honey as a topping at the end, but that's very debatable. Some people on the carnivore diet say, yeah, they're totally cool with honey, while others will say, yeah, honey may not be so good. So depending on your body and what you can handle, uh, honey is definitely optional as a topping at the end. Let's go over what we're gonna need for this amazing waffle recipe. You're definitely gonna need a blender, I like to use my Vitamix blender just because the Vitamix is so powerful. It's definitely gonna handle the job of having to liquefy our waffle batter, especially when we're dealing with ground meat. The other thing is you're gonna need a waffle maker. I had to borrow one from one of my family members, my cousin Brittany. She helped me out by letting me borrow hers, which seems to be hailing from the 1980s. The other tool you may need is something to heat up uh, the either a butter or a tallow or a duck fat, which I'll be using to coat the waffle maker to help prevent any sticking. Now, I didn't have a fancy cooking brush, so I had to improvise totally MacGyver style, and I'm going to use a little piece of sponge to dip into the fat tallow that I'll be using to coat the waffle maker. As far as ingredients, this is what you're gonna need. Like I was saying before, in order, in order to coat the waffle maker to help prevent any sticking, uh, you're gonna need some kind of fat or a butter or a ghee. You're also gonna need some butter. Uh, I'm using this as a topping at the end, along with the honey. Uh, just to make it taste a little bit better. Now, like I was saying before, honey is totally optional. If your body can handle it and you're cool with that, then yeah, go ahead and use a little bit. But if you're trying to prevent yourself from eating any sugars whatsoever or something sweet that's palatable that may make you want to, you know, indulge in some sweets later, then go ahead and get rid of this. We're going to need eggs. The recipe calls for four to five eggs per eight ounces of meat. I like to go with the five eggs. So today's recipe, I'll be using five eggs per eight ounces of meat, which brings us to the meat. Right here, I have eight ounces of ground grass-fed lamb. Here, I have eight ounces of grass-fed beef, ground, of course. To get things started, and the way that I like to make these waffles is to thoroughly cook the meat. The way I'm gonna do it today is using water to go ahead and cook uh, all the lamb and all the beef completely. Some people don't even do that or they won't cook it. They'll just go ahead and mix up the ground beef with the eggs in the blender and go ahead and make the batter that way. I tend to stay on the side of caution uh, when it comes to eating uh, any ground beef uh, or ground lamb just because of potential pathogens or something that could make you sick from not having it cooked thoroughly or just eating undercooked meat in general. Now I do eat undercooked meat if it's coming from an amazing source, if it's a steak or even if it's a liver. Before I get cooking my meat on the stove, I wanna mention one game changer for me when I'm on the carnivore diet. I wish I had this book when I first started. This is the Carnivore Cookbook by Jessica Haggard over at Primal Edge Health. Now, this recipe is not in the cookbook, but I definitely want to promote this book while I'm doing a recipe video. It's going to be a game changer for you. There's a ton of recipes in here that are carnivore diet based that will make the carnivore diet way more palatable and enjoyable so that you're eating enough food each day because that seems to be one of my problems when I first started is I wasn't eating enough because I I got kind of sick of eating the same thing over and over and over again. But then I got this book and now I have a larger range and ability to make more interesting foods. Let's get to cooking. I'm going to go ahead and submerge the beets in the water, cook it. All you got to do is get the water 
so that it's uh, above the level of the meat. Get it to a boiling point and then simmer it and let that cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. You can kind of tell because the, the meat's gonna change color. Okay guys, just got done cooking up the meat. There's one thing I do wanna mention, and that is when you cook meat using water like that, you're gonna lose some of the nutrition and the fats as it definitely gets pulled out. One way to combat that, and what I did is when I strained the water from the meat, I took that strained water and put it in the freezer for about 15 minutes so that the, the fat would rise to the top, separate from the water, and that way I just skimmed the fat off the top and placed it back on top of the meat. And you can kind of see it uh, here. So I definitely have the fat put back into the meat so as to uh, keep it a little on the fattier and healthier side. All right, all we're gonna do now is mix our meat with the eggs. So I'm gonna crack some eggs, put them in uh, a bowl and then put them in the blender, blend it up. Then we should have our batter ready to rock and roll. All right, this is our beef batter. All right, the beef batter is looking really good. So we'll put this right here for now. We just need to do our lamb version. All right, you guys, we have our batter ready to be cooked on the waffle iron. Over here on my right, I have the beef, and on my left, I have the lamb. I don't want to get them mixed up, so I'm always going to keep my beef uh, batter on the right, just to uh, remember. Also, remembering my small little request that if you're enjoying this video and you're finding some kind of value or entertainment in it, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. And if you've tried to make carnivore diet style waffles before, thanks a million. What I'm gonna do now is lube up our waffle maker with some of that duck fat like I was talking about before, just so that it helps the waffles separate properly once they're fully cooked. Now definitely don't use any Crisco or vegetable oil product because that's totally unhealthy. The cool thing about the duck fat is that it liquefies at room temperature, so it's um, pretty easy to use. I'm gonna go ahead and make the beef waffles first, go through the batter. I don't know how many it's gonna make, but it should make a good amount, so I'll be able to share a ton later on today. Booyah! Our beef waffles are definitely done and ready to be eaten. I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking up the lamb waffles now and see how they come out. Does anybody know what this little light on the waffle maker means? It seems to go on and off. I was thinking it was gonna tell you when the waffle would be done cooking, but I don't think that's the case because I have it cooking now and the light came back on. Maybe the light means it's hot enough to cook or maybe when the light goes off, it's supposed to be hot enough to cook. I have no idea. If anybody out there is a professional waffle, ma waffle maker, please let me know what this light means. Oh man, I wish I had that on tape. I was cooking this uh, waffle and I started hearing this squealing sound and all of a sudden, a small little explosion happened and uh, I got waffle all over the place. It's a little bit on my shirt, but uh, I think the heat just uh, created a little too much pressure within the waffle maker and boom, a little wake up call. All right, we made it. We got our waffles ready to be eaten. On my right, I have the beef waffles and on my left I have the lamb waffles. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference in uh, coloration. The beef is a little darker and the uh, lamb is a little lighter and they smell a little bit different. You can you can smell a little bit of the lamb uh, smell on the uh, lamb waffles. All I'm going to do now is heat these guys up in the toaster oven. Heat these guys up as well. Probably do two waffles. Get them warm so that I can have uh, the butter 
melt properly. And then, like I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and add some honey as a topping and uh, see how these taste. Which one's gonna taste better, the beef or the lamb? What do you think? I have no idea. All right, just got these guys out of the toaster. They're nice and warm. Going to add a copious amount of butter right now. Kerrygold, grass-fed butter, one of my favorite brands out there. Thoroughly drenched in butter, that's the way I like it. Now I just need to add a little bit of honey. Oh yeah, by the way, this is raw honey. I ain't messing with that processed fake stuff. These guys are drenched in butter, drenched in honey. Let's see what they taste like. Which is gonna be better, the beef or the lamb? Right now I'm gonna try the beef, a little taste of the beef. Oh, that's good, you can taste the butter and the honey. I haven't had a real waffle or pancake and I wanna say it's over, it was definitely over two and a half years since I've been doing the carnivore diet. And since I was able, to, or when I figured out I couldn't eat gluten anymore, that was probably back in 2016, 2015, I believe. So it's been about five or six years, I wanna say, since I've had a real waffle with flour. But that beef was good. I'm gonna try this lamb out, and see if there's any taste difference. Yeah, you can tell. It just, you, you get the taste of lamb still, which isn't bad. It's, it's a good taste, especially if you like the taste of lamb. Okay, so yeah, they are, they are different. The beef, you can't really taste the beef. You get a little bit of the egg taste, and then you have the butter mixed in with the honey, and it definitely tastes like a waffle, whereas the lamb, you can kind of taste the lamb. It's just different. It's not bad, it's not better. I kind of like them both. I think um, the lamb is potentially more nutritional. Uh, I think it has a little bit of a more omega-3, and the ratio to uh, the omega-3, omega-6 ratio is a little different on the lamb. Some people say it's healthier for you. So if you want to try to incorporate more lamb into your diet, then go ahead and use the, the ground grass-fed lamb to make your waffles. Otherwise, you can do it just as easily with some um, grass-fed uh, ground beef. And that's kind of my conclusion. I, I like them both. I'm really hungry. I'm going to chow these down. And then after that, I'm going to make another video. Uh, most likely going to make pancakes next to see which is, which is better, the waffles or the pancakes. And before I go, go ahead and check out the carnivore cookbook by Jessica Haggard. There's way more recipes in there. This one's not in there, but you're gonna find a ton of stuff that's gonna taste good. And you'll see some of those recipes in my YouTube channel. So go check those out. Drop a comment and let me know what you think. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.